Hi guys, JT here, and today we're bringing you some information on the Humble Bundle Bundle, scary games to play in the dark on-card bundle of December 2023. To help you answer the question, should you buy it? By using the link provided in the description below, not only will you gain access to this bundle, but you also have the opportunity to support this channel. Your support would mean the world to me, and I genuinely appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into this. And number one, we have Visage, a psychological horror game that centers around a haunted and cursed house with a dark history. You play as an unnamed protagonist who has recently moved into the house to investigate the mysterious and tragic events that have taken place there. The previous residents, a family of four, were brutally murdered and their spirits are said to still linger in the house. As you explore the house, you will uncover the truth behind the family's murders and the sinister forces that still haunt the place. The game's story is deeply disturbing and will keep you on the edge of your seat as you navigate through the dark and ominous corridors of the house. Gameplay is centered around exploration and puzzle solving with elements of survival horror. You'll need to explore every corner of the house to uncover the clues needed to solve the puzzles and progress through the game. The game's puzzles are challenging and rewarding, ranging from simple tasks like finding a key to more complex challenges that require you to solve riddles or navigate through dark and sinister environments. The horror in Visage is incredibly intense and is sure to leave a lasting impression on players. The game's atmosphere is tense and foreboding, with jump scares, creepy sounds, and disturbing visuals that will keep you on edge throughout the game. The game's permadeath system also adds an extra layer of fear, as dying in the game will force you to start over from the beginning. The game's sanity system also adds to the horror, as the longer you stay in the house, the more your sanity will deteriorate. This causes you to experience hallucinations, strange noises, and other terrifying effects that will leave you questioning your sanity and the reality of the situation. Visage's horror is also enhanced by the use of lighting and shadows. The game's lighting is incredibly realistic, with shadows that seem to move on their own, making you constantly question whether something is there or not. The game's sound design is also top-notch, with creepy ambient noises and haunting music that add to the overall atmosphere of the game. Overall, Visage is an incredibly terrifying game that will leave a lasting impression on players. The game's focus on exploration, puzzle solving, and survival combined with intense horror make for a truly immersive experience. The game's disturbing story and themes of murder and haunting add to the horror, making for a truly unforgettable game. If you're a fan of horror games and are looking for a game that will keep you on edge, Visage is definitely worth checking out. And number two we have, The Mortuary Assistant, a horror game that puts you in the shoes of a mortuary assistant working in a funeral home. The game's story follows your character as they begin to uncover dark secrets about a mortuary and the people who have been brought there. As you delve deeper into the story, you realize that something sinister is going on, and it's up to you to uncover the truth before it's too late. The gameplay in the Mortuary Assistant is a mix of exploration, puzzle solving, and survival horror. You'll need to explore the mortuary and surrounding areas to uncover clues and solve puzzles that will help you progress through the game. The puzzles are challenging and require a bit of critical thinking, but they're also rewarding once you figure them out. The horror in the Mortuary Assistant is intense and is sure to keep you on edge throughout the game. The game's atmosphere is dark and eerie, with flickering lights and creaking doors that add to the overall sense of dread. The game's sound design is also great, with eerie noises and haunting music adding to the overall sense of horror. One of the unique features of the Mortuary Assistant is the ability to interact with the bodies of the deceased. As a Mortuary Assistant, your job is to prepare bodies for funerals, and you'll need to do this in the game as well. This adds an extra layer of horror to the game, as you never know what you'll find when preparing a body. The game also features a stealth mechanic, where you'll need to avoid being caught by the game's antagonists. The game's enemies are terrifying and add to the overall sense of horror, as you never know when they'll show up. The Mortuary Assistant is a game that relies heavily on its story to keep players engaged. The game's story is dark and twisted, with themes of murder and supernatural entities. The game's characters are also well developed, with each one having their own motivations and backstory that adds to the overall narrative of the game. Overall, The Mortuary Assistant is a terrifying game that keeps you on edge throughout. The game's focus on exploration, Puzzle solving and survival horror combined with the intense horror make for a truly immersive experience. The game's unique feature of interacting with the deceased adds an extra layer of horror, and the game's story is engaging and will keep you hooked until the very end. If you're a fan of horror games and are looking for a game that will keep you on the edge of your seat, The Mortuary Assistant is definitely worth a playthrough. That is, if you don't die of fear first. And number 3 we have SCP-5K, formerly known as SCP Pandemic. A cooperative tactical horror shooter game that puts you in the midst of a story inspired by SCP-5000. The SCP Foundation secures and contains anomalies, so think of them like the Ghostbusters, except not at all funny. You play as a member of the anti-SCP Foundation, because the SCP Foundation is planning to unleash the anomalies onto humanity to wipe everybody out, so you and your team have to stop them. The game features four game modes and two missions with more to come. 
There are wave survival modes, PvP testing, a mode where you infiltrate the SCP facility, murdering guards and monsters to destroy this facility, and a mode called Hunt, where you raid various SCP facilities to disrupt your operations. You start with just a pistol, but you'll locate various weapons to play, like the assault rifle, shotgun, and bolt action rifle as an instance. You can also modify your guns on workbenches, changing optics, grips, and suppressors to suit your experience. Enemies are quite varied. You have SCP Foundation security, zombies, crab head things, animal zombies that will sprint at you to eat your face, and of course various SCP anomalies from the SCP-5000 lore. The unique aspect of this game is that you have to approach this game tactically with your multiplayer teammates. Going at it alone will absolutely get yourself murdered. Missions will help you start out slow as you infiltrate and navigate through various rooms in a facility, covering each other's butts, and will most likely end with a mad dash to the exit when the facility is about to be destroyed and monsters are running after you and your teammates. You need to ensure that you look across rooms that you're in, and take things slow as you clear each room. Communication is important in this game, and you might want to get a microphone so you can talk to your teammates as you navigate through this horrific facility. Occasionally, you'll bump into an anomaly called SCP-173, which looks like a creepy statue with a face. It is an enemy that requires one of you and the team to keep your eye on it at all times, while the rest of the team navigate through the room. Lose sight of it and the creepy statue comes to life and rushes at you to instantly murder you. Overall, SCP-5K is a great experience if you have some friends to play together. Know that this game is still in early access, so do expect quite a few bugs in the game. And number 4 we have... The Blackout Club. A cooperative first-person horror game. The game takes place in a small town where strange occurrences have been happening and players must work together to uncover the truth behind the mysterious events. The gameplay of the Blackout Club is focused on cooperative play, with players working together to complete various objectives, while avoiding detection by mysterious enemies known as The Shape. The game features a unique mechanic system called the Stalker System, which allows players to track the movements of The Shape and avoid detection. The horror elements in the Blackout Club are particularly effective. The game's atmosphere is eerie and oppressive, with creepy sounds and a haunting soundtrack creating a sense of unease and tension. The game's use of light and dark is also effective, with players using flashlights to navigate the dark environments while also trying to avoid detection by the shape. One of the game's most unique features is its emphasis on stealth and non-violent gameplay. Players must use stealth and strategy to avoid detection by the shape, rather than engaging in direct combat. This adds a layer of tension to the game, as players must work together to coordinate their movements and avoid detection. In terms of gameplay, the Blackout Club is well designed and engaging. The game's objectives are varied, and require players to use their skills and coordination to complete. The game's character customization system also allows players to personalize their characters and abilities, adding to the game's replayability. Overall, The Blackout Club is a strong entry in the horror genre. The game's emphasis on cooperative play and non-violent gameplay adds a unique twist to the horror genre, while the game's effective use of horror elements creates a sense of terror and mystery. While the game may not be suitable for all players, fans of horror games will find much to enjoy here. And number 5 we have... Them and Us. A survival horror game that started as an indie Resident Evil 2 remake. The story takes place in 1978 and follows Alicia, a woman in prison for 9 years for horrific crime. She survives a prison transport bus crash and wakes up in a creepy mansion in the middle of a forest. Alicia quickly finds the mansion infested with zombies and must survive, while discovering the ties of the mansion and its occupants to herself and her missing daughter Emily. From the get-go, you can choose to play the game in either classic Resident Evil style with fixed camera angles and tank controls, or Resident Evil 4 style and over-the-shoulder perspective. You have access to a small inventory that can be accessed at any time, containing items, found documents, and personal notes. Because of its limited space, you have to constantly manage it and decide what to carry and what to leave behind. You'll be navigating through the mansion and its grounds filled with locked doors that require various tools like levers, crests, and books to unlock and progress further into the game. Some puzzles are easy, while others are quite difficult. If you get stuck, you have to take a good look around for clues as they are never far away. In terms of combat, you'll encounter plenty of zombies that will have their arms outstretched, slowly walking to you trying to bite your juicy flesh and drink your blood. While most of them will beeline towards you, some of them will display unusual behaviors to trip you up. So be careful, especially if you're engaging them in close range combat. There are a handful of guns that you can obtain, some only available after the first playthrough, but resources like ammo and healing items are very scarce, so you have to watch your resources as you explore the mansion and pick your battles. This becomes more apparent later on, as the game starts throwing more and more unique enemy types your way often without warning, forcing you to switch tactics on the fly. Overall, Demonus is a strong entry in the survival horror genre. The game's effective use of horror elements creates a sense of dread and tension that will keep players on the edge of their seats. While the game's difficulty may be a turnoff for some players, fans of classic survival horror games will find much to enjoy here. Why? And number 6 we have... Labyrinthine, a horror game that takes place in a small town maze. Oh, you begin the story right outside this maze. You walk into a corridor, grabbing a flashlight and a cassette player. 
You then head into the maze filled with thick pine trees. The maze starts out as quite tame, with a couple of jump scares from the trees. They are harmless to you, but will probably give your heart a few jumps. Until, of course, you see a creepy figure looming in the distance. This game is full of puzzles. In the first stage, if you want to open a gate, you have to find different statues that contain letters, and assemble the letters to form a word. While it may look like nothing much is happening besides some creepy scenes, after solving more puzzles and opening more gates, the witch appears, and you have to avoid it at all costs. In fact, there's actually more than one witch. This is where having a companion player along is really helpful. As you progress through the game, you're introduced to new puzzles, new mechanics, and new enemies that get creepier as you keep playing. The gameplay is quite simple. You have your flashlight, lantern, glow stick, and a compass. The goal of the game is to solve puzzles and try to stay alive. If you die, you will be sent back to the last checkpoint. Don't fret though as your progress is saved, like found puzzle pieces. If you're playing alone, you may have a hard time doing this all on your own, since the maze starts to get very confusing. Since there are also multiple enemies hiding within the map, it is helpful to bring a friend along for moral support, if nothing else. The game supports up to 4 players. Puzzle pieces can be found hiding in certain areas and some requiring some work. Once a piece is found, you need to bring them back to the console to slot into. Finding the consoles can be confusing on your own, but with the help of friends, it gets better. Puzzles are quite varied, with some needing you to fill up a vial of liquid in a certain order or digging through an effigy made of rotting flesh to find a piece of the puzzle. Overall, Labyrinthine is a great cooperative horror game to play with friends. The game's effective use of horror elements creates a combined sense of terror and mystery that keeps players engaged from start to finish. And that's all for this bundle. This bundle is a must-buy for fans of horror games, be it those who are into horror adventures or multiplayer. I would highly recommend it. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.